Submarine landslides. Basically a landslide that happens underwater. Sounds kind of harmless, right? But it's not. You see, it can wreak havoc with underwater infrastructure. It can cause tsunamis and it's unpredictable. It's also becoming a bit of a problem for Ireland because the Rockall Trough and Bank that lie off the west coast are one of the major source of activity. So would we like to know more? Of course we would. So we went out to interview a scientist has been studying this for the last 10 years. Let's see what she's got to say. So can you tell us how general are these avalanches around the world? We tend to find them almost everywhere. And in the past it was thought to be uh, not a very common phenomenon, uh, but that's probably because we weren't looking enough. So uh, the ocean is actually quite underexplored. So we tend to say that we know more about space than we know about the oceans. So the more we search, the more we find. And they tend to, to accumulate, they tend to happen mostly where we have a lot of sediment depositing there. So for example, in the mouths of rivers, where you have a lot of sediment coming in into the sea. Uh, so we get a lot of landslides there. Um, and areas uh, where we have a lot of earthquakes, for example. But it isn't always accumulation of sediment. I mean, you mentioned, for example, the Azores, where a lot of people are concerned about yeah. uh, the fact that one side is very unstable and that something might happen there. But how likely is it that there will be a big landslide? There? Yes, with volcanic islands like the Azores or the Canary Islands or the Hawaiian Islands as well, um, because you have a lot of material building up very fast, you know, with volcanoes, you get lava flows. A lot of the times it's not even episodic, it's all the time like with Hawaii. So they keep building up in height, they, they become bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier then for the seafloor. So they become heavy for themselves and they just crumble under their own weight. Um, and you get a lot of weaknesses and faults within them as well. So it's very likely for them to, to destroy themselves as fast as they construct themselves. And a lot depends on how fast it happens. Yes, because it doesn't have time to find balance. So you keep putting material on top of previous material and then more and more. And if you do this very quickly, it's just the material doesn't have time to arrange itself in a comfortable position, you know. So before it gets comfortable, you put more of it on top of it. So it just... So when that happens, and especially when it happens rapidly, there is a consequence. Because it'll displace a lot of water. Yeah. So what happens then? A tsunami. A tsunami. How often does that happen? Not very often, uh, because a lot of parameters need to be taken into consideration. There's a lot of factors that act with landslides. One of them is, you mentioned volcanic islands. So with volcanic islands, a lot of the times the landslide happens uh, in the subaerial environment, so above the water, and then the material hits the water, water and creates a big splash. So you get a tsunami. And that can be huge. And that can be huge, but it will be very localized. It will just affect the immediate area. Yes. Uh, it's not like with earthquakes. Mm -hmm. So they're smaller in their effect, yes. okay? but it may be more immediate. So looking back at the historical record, uh, how often does this happen? We don't know that much about it. Uh, we know of a few examples, but a lot of the times uh, it's either, it either hasn't been recorded or people thought it was, uh, it may have been uh, connected to an earthquake. So historical accounts aren't very good to link tsunamis to landslides. Because the understanding wasn't there, like the Philippines. Yeah. Because in Papua New Guinea, for example, they thought the tsunami was caused by the earthquake. And it was a few years later that they realized that the tsunami was actually caused by a landslide that was caused by the earthquake. Now, going back to ourselves, we have the rock hole trough and the activities going on there. You're going out there in the summer to do a study there. But have there been large collapses there? I mean, you mentioned um, there was evidence of a big slide, a tsunami at the Shetlands a few thousand years ago years ago, the, the Sorega landslide in the North Sea, uh, that created a very big tsunami that affected all of the, uh, the coastal areas of the North Sea where it received that tsunami. Wouldn't that actually have had an impact as far down as here in Ireland? It may well have had, but it would have been only a few centimetres or, or a metre high by the time, because Scotland's in the way, yeah. and in a way protected Ireland right. Right. off the waves. Now, I've heard mention of an event that was recorded along the western coast of Ireland. 
that suggests that at some stage yeah. there may have been something major happening there, uh, maybe even a tsunami. There's a lot of stories actually, you know, like folk tales uh, that are talking about tsunamis for, for the western coast. Um, one of them is for, uh, I can't remember which part, but somewhere in the south, um, Kilba no, Kilbaha, no, Kilbaha in the west. Yeah. Um, that the, there's a person's tale says that he saw the sea retreating a few uh, tens of meters away and that the, the, the fish were flapping on the, on the mud. What period would this be? It would have been a few hundred years ago. So this would have been something that happened all the time. Yeah. Western Europe was affected by a tsunami in 1755 with the Lisbon earthquake. Yeah. Uh, so, but that goes back to the to what kind of historical record we have. So there was a tsunami then, and we know there was an earthquake. But were there any landslides? Could some of the tsunamis that reached here have been generated by landslides that were caused by that tsunami, yeah. by that by that earthquake? So you couldn't possibly know because. Until, I think it was in the 1980s that marine geology and marine research started mapping the offshore. So until then, you wouldn't know to link the tsunamis with landslides. Now, one of the things that you mentioned is that the speed at which these things happen is very important. If you have a huge mass of material yeah. that slides down, slumps down, it can displace an enormous amount of water. You're talking about square kilometers, almost like an island that, 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 that falls into the water. But what's not really certain is how often smaller amounts come down rather than larger amounts. And if we come back to the example of the Canaries, um, what could happen there, uh, people are very fearful of a major event uh, happening. But what could actually happen is that maybe smaller amounts uh, slide down yeah. over a period of time. In which case you won't have a very large tsunami, you'll have small splashes. So you'll have small splashes that may not be that important for a tsunami. Yeah. Then there is another hazard. When you have an area that uh, constantly moves, you can't put any infrastructure. So for example, our submarine cables. Submarine cables yeah. that connect Ireland to the States and to Newfoundland go across rock or trough, actually. Yeah. There is a specific area that we have cables. And in fact, that area may be very close to where sediment is moving. So we need to know not to put the so, cable there. So the consequences may be not what people expect could result in, for example, a break in communications. With all the activity about yeah. exploration for gas and oil, That's got if you put a platform, you yeah. can't put a platform somewhere where it's unstable and the slope yeah. could go. Or, or material could come from somewhere else and you know, and remove it and disrupt it, yeah. So this summer you'll be going with your team um, on the Celtic Explorer Research Vessel? Yes, we're going on the Celtic Explorer in the second half of July. And how long will you be out there? Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. 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 And we'll be mapping again those scarves to see if in 10 years anything has happened. We'll pull an ROV, a remotely operated vehicle, down and uh, get footage, video footage of the walls of the scarves and to see if any biological activity is happening there. So we'll be looking at what kind of habitats like to grow on scarves like that and how they're affected when a big landslide happens. How fast does an area need to recover again? Because these landslides, apart from, from tsunamis and our infrastructure, affect the life on the seafloor enormously. So it's been something like 10 years since the original survey is done and um, you're going back out to the rock hole trough this summer. So you'll be looking at it now 10 years later and see what kind of changes have happened um, and compare them to what's happening now. Would this help you to predict what would happen in the future? Um, yeah, predict is a, very, is a very big word to use with any natural phenomena because there's no specific cyclicity to them. So we can't ever invoke that it will happen then. All we can say is whether it's likely to happen, so we can put a possibility on it, uh, but, and to what extent, how, how dangerous it might be. But there, there isn't a way where I could say that it will happen in 10 years or in 100 years. I could tell you that it's happening yeah. and it happens. Yes, yeah, so yeah. you can't even put a probability on it. It's something that could happen. It's happened before yeah. and it's reasonable to think that it may happen again.